It's a delight to be with Cedar again. We have had some uh, some frank exchanges, and I guess uh, those of you who know me and uh, would know that that I am passionate about industry and science and how we get through that uh, that transition that we're facing. Probably the biggest transition in the manufacturing industry that Australia's ever seen. But I'm only 60, so I'm just saying in my lifetime. But certainly post-war. There is a huge challenge there, and uh, the challenge is as much about maintaining productivity and standard of living as it is about, uh, well, it's all, all, all encompassed in the one thing, I guess, but, you know, what are my goals? Well, my goals are to see us penetrating uh, global supply chains with high-value, add high-technology products. Why do I want to do that? Well, I'm into that sort of stuff, uh, but I also want to do it because I want to maintain the standard of living of the workers who, who do that sort of stuff. And uh, there's nothing I enjoy more as a minister than going somewhere where they're making things. And any of you have been in my uh, ministerial office, and I added something this morning from CSIRO, uh, and I almost added something else which they wouldn't give me, but I will get off them shortly. Um, but you'll see across my uh, display board things that are made in Australia that are absolutely the best in the world and excel there. So that's very much about what makes me get up in the morning and, and take on what is an enormous challenge in terms of the transition. And the challenge is uh, how we harness science and research more effectively and to that end, uh, how we create new and more effective products, processes, services and technologies that, remain, that, that will ensure that Australian industry remains internationally competitive Productivity will also drive efficiencies, and that in itself will help us to be extremely competitive uh, in the global economy and also stimulate economic growth here in Australia. To this end, a major focus of the government is to help bridge the gap between industry, science and research with the objective, as I say, of boosting innovation, productivity and our international competitiveness. In short, we want to put science and technology and research at the centre of industry policy. And in doing that, we want to give every industry in, the, in Australia the opportunity to be part of that and not just write industries off. I saw an industry up in, um, on the Sunshine Coast that builds box trailers. Now, there's not much more basic in manufacturing than building box trailers, but they actually imported technology from Europe and, and, and particularly the technology that Jaguar use, um, where they actually rivet the pieces together rather than weld, and that's how a modern Jaguar is made out of aluminium. It's riveted together in a way where the rivet doesn't pierce the second piece of material, it bulges, then fits inside it. Um, really does my head in, but it's great technology. And so even in the simplest forms of manufacturing, they have they have transitioned to a high-tech trailer. Um, and I guess that uh, these changes and, and the way we're trying to drive innovation and productivity are reinforced in terms of what's happening to our economy. And I note that Australia's Future Workforce, a report by CEDA released this week, has the main thrust of how technology change will affect Australia's future workforce. And it is our workforce that's going to feel the change. You know, when you make a machine redundant, yep, it just sits there and, and you look at it fondly perhaps 10 years later, it's the people that have to be on this journey. It's the people that have to be involved, sorry, in the changes that are going to happen to their lives. There'll be all sorts of anxieties and, and, and all sorts of worries. And I say to people, because I was taught this when I changed the Australian Wheat Board uh, and made it uh, a private or, or a, a public organisation with shareholdings, that you can only be sure of three things in life, death, taxes and change. And that's the reality. Everyone knows that change has got to happen, but ensuring that the people involved actually think that A, they can benefit, they can benefit from the change, and B, that they're doing something good for the country uh, is the way to get around that and, 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 and to bring them on board. We are, as I said, all familiar with the transition occurring in Australian manufacturing, uh, but we're also seeing a significant change in the resource sector. And 
Having been a farmer, Murphy's Laws kicked in right as it would, and both these things are occurring at once. It would have been tough enough were it just one. It's going to be more than doubly tough that it's two, and the resource sector is going through a, through a cycle, uh, both in terms of changing from, from construction to actually production, and at the same time, uh, again, Murphy's Law has kicked in and, and the resource prices have halved, which, of course, uh, cuts profits not by half, but by a quantum of that. Productivity growth is uh, essential in securing economic growth and our living standards, and so the question will always be, how do we lift productivity? And, of course, the answer is innovation. According to our research, innovation contributes more than 60% of labour productivity growth. Australian businesses that innovate are twice as likely to report productivity increases over the previous year compared to businesses that don't. It's a well-known statistic, but it's amazing how few businesses actually react to it, and we need to do something about that. ABS figures show innovative active businesses consistently report superior performance not only in productivity, but also, more importantly, in profitability and income from sales and IT uptake. Over the long term, the OECD estimates that the combined gains across the various stages of innovation account for at least 50% of economic growth, 50%. And in short, innovation is the cornerstone of productivity. The question is, as a nation, are we as, as Australians doing enough to foster that innovation? And we have a strong national science and re research infrastructure which is there to support uh, our capacity to innovate. However, international comparisons show that overall our innovation performance is not as strong as some other advanced nations. In fact, we're 17th out of 143 countries in the 2014 Global Innovation Index. There's room for improvement and, for example, we have one of the weakest levels of networking, I would call it pathetic, actually, uh, one of the weakest le levels of networking and collaboration within the OECD. We rank 29 out of 30 and our, on innovation collaboration between industry and research and you don't have to be a mathematician that uh, our large firms rank last in that process. Not enough knowledge is being transferred between industry and research and vice versa, so we're not translating our research into commercial outcomes as well, as, as well or as frequently as we should. Access to the right skills and, and finance, especially early stage finance, are the top two most commonly reported barriers to innovation in business. And there's no doubt that taking a high innovation path also comes uh, brings with it risk taking and we need to manage that. We must therefore uh, be sure that the policy, policy challenge is, is realised and that is that we consider how to help entrepreneurs, in, investors and innovators to better assess and manage these risks. The Australian Government has a vital role to play in fostering innovation by providing the right policy and regulatory settings to enable innovation to thrive. Through the, the Industry Innovation and Competitiveness Agenda, we are pursuing a new policy paradigm that better harnesses science and research innovation. This agenda places science and research at the centre of industry policy and seeks to bolster industries in which Australia has a competitive strength. The centrepiece of this agenda is our 225 years. Andrew, the budget's gone up, looking good. Uh, Andrew Stevens, who's the chair of my advanced manufacturing uh, growth centre. The centrepiece is the, of this agenda is our $225 million initiative to establish five and now, as, as, uh, as was pointed out, six um, uh, growth centres of a sort, depending on how you view the Northern Australia CRC. Advanced manufacturing, food and agribusiness, medical technologies and pharmaceuticals, mining equipment, technology and services, or METS as it's known, oil, gas and energy resources. And these sectors reflect the mix of our comparative advantage in natural resources and our strength in human capital and innovation. They also complement the science and research priorities that we've announced recently to help focus our support for science and research on the most important challenges facing the nation. And these priorities, as announced by the Prime Minister a few weeks ago at, uh, at a CRC 
ex ex exhibition downstairs um, are, of course, food, soil and water, transport, cyber security, energy resources, uh, energy and resources, manufacturing, sorry, I'll start that again, advanced manufacturing, environmental change and health. The growth centres will, of course, draw together some of the great expertise from business, universities and researchers to solve the problems, to innovate and improve productivity. Australia's excellence in long and excellent and long-running CRCs will be the engine of innovation, innovation research to support the work of the growth centres. And so that all starts to fit together and you've got, CR, you've got the CSIRO arching over the top with that great work that they do. Additionally, we'll be rolling out a new stream of CRC projects and I recently announced $74 million uh, funding towards two CRCs, including an innovative manufacturing CRC. And as I say, we've just announced a $75 million CRC as part of the white paper on developing Northern Australia. Australia has world-class universities and superb science agencies like CSIRO, like ANSTO, like AIMS, and of course Geoscience Australia, which I have a particular passion for, being the son, grandson of a geologist. Um, and they are a potential source of innovation and productivity which has yet to be fully tapped. And therein lies a challenge for us, not only to get that collaboration to happen, but actually use to the full extent great institutions and research uh, capacities that we have in organisations like those. Through boosting commercial returns fr uh, from research strategies, we are implementing a range of initiatives to translate our world-class research into real goods and services, technologies and life improvements. The benefits you know, of industry collaboration with researchers can and will be significant and we must, must, must do it. Take CSIRO, for example, working with Northern Australia, it's uh, developed tools to improve the efficiency of the transport that uh, moves, of course, not only the cattle around, but many of the products that, that go into the cattle or associated with their production. I expect to see three of our growth centres up and running in the short term and the other two uh, will, will follow soon after. And it's all part of helping manufacturers make the transition to higher value knowledge intensive production through the manufacturing uh, opportunities that are there, as well as the manufacturing transition program, which we recently announced, which saw some, you know, a business in Brisbane who most people would not even know was there, except I'd heard of it previously because they'd solved a problem in the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter, that the Americans couldn't solve in relation to weight, are now building technology which is so far advanced that the US Defence Forces are buying it ahead of buying their own equipment out of America. As well as that, the government uh, supports innovation and commercialisation through the Entrepreneurs Infrastructure po Program and Early Stage VCLP. In addition, there's $2.5 billion a year in tax relief delivered through the R&D tax incentive. We are, of course, keen to promote STEM and this area, in particular in relation to getting young people and starting them at kindergarten, involved back in the STEM subjects, which have fallen away, again, almost disgracefully, over the last decade. We must get people interested in STEM because STEM is going to be the cornerstone of future jobs. And with the chief government scientists and with the support of, uh, of a whole range of people, we are working our way back into this area. And the Prime Minister is giving it his focus. Obviously, Christopher Pine, as the Minister for Education, is doing the same. And I know CEDA is behind us on this as well. We do need to, to make sure that young people understand that science is the cornerstone to their lives. They see it, they don't understand it, therefore they don't accept it. But everything they do, their health, their wellbeing, their entertainment, the technology that moves them around, is all based on STEM. And when someone said to me, uh, this is a second-hand story, but I'll tell it the way Tom Burns told it. Tom always told a story as if he was the person that was told to. But when someone said to me that, uh, that their son had said to them they didn't want to do any science subjects because they were going to be a futures trader and a, and a hedge fund manager, uh, that is how far we're disconnecting 
maths, science, engineering uh, from the reality of what people want to do. No doubt that person is going to have to learn some STEM skills pretty soon if he wants to realise his ambition. Look, I'm, I'm going to just... Uh, in terms of deregulation, this story is a well-told story, but it's also a great success story for our government. Lowering the cost of doing business in Australia by a billion dollars last year, another billion on top of that billion this year, and another billion on top of that billion, uh, as well as reducing red tape in approving projects in, a, in, in Australia to the tune of a trillion dollars since we've been in government, and introducing things like the one-stop shop and changes to the way NOPSEMA, our National Offshore Petroleum Environment Management Authority works, have all contributed to making Australia an easier place to do business. Can I say in conclusion that transformation is always going to occur in our economy, it is now, and it must be embraced. We should never stand back. Malcolm Turnbull made a point last night which hadn't occurred to me, and that's a division, but I'm not going. Um, <laughs> I actually had enough foresight to get leave this time. Um, Malcolm Turnbull said something last night, I know this sounds like a cheap political shot, but it's actually something we need to beat out of our psyche. He said people talked, and particularly the last government, talked about future-proofing Australian industries in Australia. The last thing you want to do is future-proof an industry against the future. What you do want to do is embrace that future get hold of it and do it better than anyone else. And so we must, we must embrace the changes that are going on. Securing the future will, as I've said a few times already, entail putting science and research at the centre of industry policy and producing tangible outcomes. And as I've just had my little rant about STEM skills, getting students to understand the importance of STEM and embracing them. It may be harder to learn than some of the other subjects that they, uh, that the teachers want to teach them because they're easy and they can get good scores. It will not stand them in the stead that STEM schools will stand them. Look, we all know that there's a lot to do and it's not going to be easy to do it, but if industry works with us, if organisations like CETA support us, we, we will get there. And this is a sustainable and long-term goal that will deliver us a very productive future and ensure that Australia in, it becomes a world leader in innovation. We've had our patches. We need to get back to it on a consistent basis. Thank you.